Come on, Luke. I got a surprise. Are you ready to see it? Go in this room right here. Come on, quick. Okay. Quick, 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 quick. Okay. Come on. Okay. Come on, quick. Look in there. Look in there. Over here. Oh, oh, there's alligators. Get you one. Okay, they won't bite you. You're not scared of them? No. Pick you one up. Wow, oh, it's crazy how they sit there. Maybe now you can get Grandma that alligator pocketbook she's been wanting. Oh, look at him. Y'all hear that noise? Look at that. What's up everybody? Blue Gabe here. Tell me that's not the cutest thing you've ever seen in your entire life. We're out here at a good friend of mine, Lee Lightsey's ranch, the Lightsey family ranch. He raises, he goes out in the wild, collects these eggs, legally obviously, brings them back, incubates them, hatches them, and then takes them to Louisiana where they go back to a restocking program. And here we are today, and we're gonna tell you all about that. Look at the little guys. They're harmless right now, but in a few years, I wouldn't be holding them like that. All right, so we're in the incubating room. This is where all these little baby eggs come that they pick up out of the nest. What's next? Well, we're just making a little racket for the little baby gators that we're trying to hatch. We'll start, start chirping. Here. You're chirping in that one. So you just open it up. Oh, there's one sitting on top of the... All right, y'all come here and watch. So we're going to take these out into a different room so and make sure they all get out of the eggs. Take that racket to the table. Get it on the table. Let's find a couple more before we get it. Jake, go there. find one. Go shake one gently until you hear any noise. Grab it, and when you find it, uh oh. Now will just one hatch, or will all of them hatch? Well, whenever she lays them, they are all going to hatch at the same time. But a lot of times, just one will start, and then what will happen? The mom will come and and actually hatch the egg. She'll dig them out of the nest and she'll do it. So we're actually gonna take these and hatch them just like the mama would. So the first one in here is sort of like me, an overachiever. He, he's a getter done. <laughs> I don't know if I'd say that, but let's go hatch them. Holy macaroni! Look at all the babies. Look at them coming out of there like crazy. So we're just taking all the excess moss. This so what is the point of the moss? It's called sphagnum moss. It just retains moisture and it keeps up. See, that must have been me in the bunch. Look at Come out of here. Here, look at him coming out. Look at him. He's, he's coming out. Holy mackerel. So, I mean, and then none of these were out of the eggs when you first touched it, but right, one, so right? So you see the, he's popping out. I mean, I take and just easily push him out and he comes right on out, just like that. What in the world? Oh, it's amazing. And you just. Hello, world. Imagine you being the first person he had to see in his life. I guarantee it. He's like, what did I do to deserve this? <laughs> right. Look at this little guy he's getting he's away. He's getting away. He thinks he's... So you now, why do you need to come in here and crack them open? They can't get out on their own? Well, because the bait, the, the mamas would do that in the, in the wild. Yeah. The mama comes in and scratch the nest up, dig them out, put them in her mouth, carry them to the water. Now here's the real question. Have you ever had a mama almost get you when you're collecting these eggs? Oh yeah. oh yeah. Is it like what you see on TV where they get real mean? Real mean. Like you can't just reach down and pet her on the nose and she'll leave? No. Jake, you want to tell everybody about you almost getting jerked in by a giant gator oh today? Oh my gosh. My dad kept the rod on full drag. <laughs> I almost got pulled in the water. And short story, we were gator hunting this morning, but for much bigger gators. Jake had the rod, I put it to full drag, the gator left, and almost took him with him. But all we got him with is the chicken. No, we don't have him until you got him on that dart. He survived, he's still alive. Everybody, he didn't die, look at him. I was holding on to the front of the reel. Uh, Jake, you want another one? You want to hatch another one? Or? Squeeze them out. Squeeze Pretend them out. you're the mama right now. You're the mama. Put it in your mouth. Put the egg in your mouth. <laughs> what's, what's... There you go. Hold it down. Hold it down. And just kind of put him down there low where he doesn't fall and hit his head. And that's what happened to your daddy. He hit his head and he came out. <laughs> Hold him close to the... Squeeze hard. Oh, there he goes. There now he just goes. set him down easy on the thing. There he is. What we do is we'll take and 
put them over into another basket and count them. So 28. So you take a look at the bottom of the nest and see there was 30 eggs there. So there was 28 hatched out of 30, which is very, very good. That's um, way better than in the wild. It's well, how many is in a wild nest typically? Uh, 35, 30 to 35, but they say that only 1% maybe actually survive, but what happens is this time of the year we're getting all this rain and you get all the fire ants that go to the high nest and so when these babies start to hatch the fire ants at just demolish them. They never get the, they never even with the mom's help digging them out they'll never make it to the water because of fire ants. So what now? Well let's count, let's get them out of this trough. We put them in here, this is um, after we hatch them out of the egg, we put them in this trough, let them swim in here for a couple days, then we put them on this dry moss and they'll stay here until they travel to Louisiana. Um, what are they going to Louisiana for? Well, they, they have a, re uh, when they pick up alligator eggs in Louisiana, they're required to turn back a certain percentage that after they hatch and grow them up to four foot. And uh, our gators in Florida grow a little slower than the Louisiana gators, so they buy gators from us, take them to Louisiana, and there they turn them loose. They don't, these little gators don't look just like Cajun food, and that's not why you're sending them there? Yeah. All right, let's get to counting. Jake? 20. Put 20 in there. There's four in there now. How many is that? Oh, crud. One, two, three, four, five. Does it have to be dead on 20? No. It's five. That was five. I mean, it's pretty close. Tell me these little guys aren't the cutest thing you've ever seen. And how do these cute little things turn into giant, big, massive alligators like y'all saw me kill in a couple videos ago? Alright y'all, so here is a gator nest. I hope this mama don't catch me wherever she's at. She shouldn't be right here because it looks like the babies have hatched. See those eggs? She's, but she's more than likely in this pond right here somewhere. She wasn't here when we pulled up. Oh, oh, whoa, there she is. I didn't even see her sitting there. She should pop up in just a second. All right, so we didn't get to give you the full tour today because it was pouring down raining. I'm gonna finish this video up tomorrow, come back, try to show you more details, go over a whole bunch more of the you know, the things that go along with gator nesting, y'all don't go anywhere. There's still a lot more left. Wonder where she, oh, there she is. There's the mama right there. She just went back down. All right, y'all, as you can see, we're back at the house. It was raining out there so bad yesterday. I wanted to show you more of the alligator nests at the pond, but it kept storming and our cameras are expensive and didn't want to get them wet. When a mama gator starts to build a nest, she gets all around her and gets all kinds of muck and vegetation and bushes and grass and she just builds a big old mound then she scoops a little hole out of it and gets in and lays her eggs and buries it that incubates them it keeps it super warm hopefully in a future video i can go over more of that but right now i'm super hungry we've been editing we got some ribeyes but check this out so david farmer was with us a good friend of mine yesterday he's here at the house today him and jake just went fishing for a little bit look what they come home with like who catches something that like that's what they came back with, a big old blue crab and a nice keeper mangrove. A lot of y'all might say, well, that was small, but I guarantee you I can make that small fish a good dish. All right, let's throw these steaks on the grill. All right, so just going with a little bit of Lowry's, a little bit of the all-purpose. Slapping it on the grill. One thing good about this gravity grill, you can take it on the boat to hunting camp, to cow camp, to the beach, wherever you want. I personally just beat it down on the ground in my backyard. We're gonna cook these steaks and I'll see y'all in the kitchen in a minute, but don't go anywhere because I got some more good footage to show you. All right, I promise I'm on my way in the kitchen. This is totally off subject, but for those of y'all that watched my mountain oyster video, you saw that little boy pop a whip. After that video aired, I had a guy on Instagram message me and say, hey, I want to build you a bull whip. I said, well, that's pretty cool. Build me one. Here it is. And watch this. Let me see how good I can pop this thing. I haven't popped one since I was a kid. Whoa. I'm scared to death of popping myself in the face. Pretty dope, y'all. Check him out. He built this thing by hand. The handle the rope, the whip, the whole nine yards. Now let's go to the kitchen. All right, well, y'all can see I can cook stuff other than fish. See that, see that? Oh, yes, yep. 
steak, baked potato with mushrooms, sauteed mushrooms on top. But this is the most important thing. That's that one crab and that one snapper. A lot of people would say, well, why would you keep that one crab and that one snapper? I mean, that's, that's a $25 plate at Red Lobster. Add a little bit of a salad, which I got right here. One little crab, one little fish, $25 plate. That's why they kept it. Now they're gonna enjoy it. Look at that, y'all. I mean, just come on with the come on. Jake and I are sharing a steak. He's gonna dig in on that crab. This is my good friend, David Farmer from Georgia. Him and I grew up since we were knee high to a grasshopper. Now we're gonna ask you to say the grace. Lord, thank you for the food we're about to receive. Let it be nourishment to our bodies. Do our work in your name. Uh, thank you for looking after us. Amen. 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 All right, we're not gonna show you eating the crab because we're gonna do a crabbing video soon. But I do wanna say thank you all for all the positive comments. I know this video is gonna be a little bit all around, but you guys asked for it. Y'all are the ones who told me to just post it. Hey, don't worry about it. post it. So guess what, I posted it. I hope y'all enjoy it. I hope y'all keep giving me the positive comments. Keep subscribing, keep sharing, keep up all the love. But like I always say, all good stories gotta come to an ending. And we out of here.